Hi, I just want to welcome you to my Periscope as I take some time tonight to actually answer some questions about seers, about prophets, about the prophetic, and more. And these questions are coming out of my Facebook page because I actually left that question on a thread and people have been, you know, dropping their questions and whatnot. Now, you probably noticed uh, in the background as I turned this on, you know, kind of, you have to reverse the camera, you know, once you turn it on. You probably noticed the, the picture of the crocodile in the back. And I just want to explain that one. Uh, I, I actually have a title for that picture. That picture is, is called uh, Dead Crocodile, okay? Dead Leviathan. And I think some of you need to hear that. I'm going to turn this camera around just so you can look at it, okay? Yep, that is the dead one. All right. Okay, so anyway, uh, for those of you who need to, to just, you know, have some hope, okay? Uh, Leviathan is dead, 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 dead. Uh, dead croc, okay? Dead crocodile. Uh, so I'm going to give you a few moments to hop on. And um, while you're doing that, I'm going to share a testimony. I just felt like I needed to share it. I didn't share it on my, um, my Facebook Live that I just did, but I felt it was for this one. Um, you know, I, I went into a, a store uh, to buy a birthday gift just, you know, the other day, and I was met by a college girl at the counter. She was a worker there, and I didn't know who she was, you know, and she says, do you remember me? And I'm like, I don't. And she said, well, I went to your church a few years ago, and she said, um, she said uh, I was in a back brace because she had um, so much, uh, you know, I guess she had scoliosis, something like that, and she was in a back brace, and she said that you prayed for me, and my back straightened out. Now, now I thought that was really cool, but then it gets even better. She said she went to uh, her surgeon because she was gonna have surgery. I guess her back was so bent. Um, and she was gonna have surgery. And the surgeon said, it's a miracle your back straightened out. And she didn't have the surgery and she's been pain free and it's been two years. And so that was just a very wonderful thing to walk into, um, you know, just right, at, right uh, in that store. And uh, the reason I felt like I needed to bring it out because I feel like there's some people on this, uh, um, this uh, periscope that you need to hear that testimony because the Lord's going to do it again for you and there's something going on with your back and I want to point you to Psalm 129 um, and that many times these issues are actually rooted in things that happened to us growing up happening in childhood uh, Psalm 129 talks about the furrows being on the back the furrows being made long the be plowers plowing on the back since your youth and that the Lord is breaking the cords of wickedness off of your life. And so I just want to release that over you um, right now over this uh, periscope. I believe some people are being healed right now um, of issues in your back, that your back is straightening, the pain is leaving. And, um, you know, if I can just uh, put a put a name to it for you, um, you know, a lot of the scoliosis, it, 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 again, Psalm 129, look at that, that scripture. Um, you actually get bent out of shape emotionally and it shows up in your back. You get bent out of shape. And the Lord is straightening straightening this right now you're getting free of the emotional trauma you're getting free of what showed up in your body uh, as a result of that emotional trauma um, and your back is straightening out just right as I speak right now you're feeling actually heat on your back you're feeling the electricity of God on your back right now um, the cords are being broken um, your back is coming back together you don't you're not gonna need surgery um, you're not gonna need surgery okay but it might feel like you're having surgery right now just go ahead and lie down just let it happen Okay, God bless you. I just want to release that word of you. I just felt it the minute I got on this, um, that this is something that needed to happen. Okay, now a um, couple things that I have uh, going on. A couple things that I have going on. I'm going to be in San Bernardino not once but twice uh, this month. Um, I'll be at the Invade Wide World Conference. Uh, go to jenniferevaz.com, look at my itinerary and get the information. I'll be the third weekend of this month, and then I'll be back again at the fourth weekend of this month. This is literally my third pass uh, through Southern California in about an eight-week period of time. What is the Lord doing, okay? I'm a land deliverer, a land prophet, and atmosphere shifter. So when I go to some place you know, that many times the Lord's doing a work, and I know that. Um, in October, I will be in Bangkok. 
um, and then I will be in Sweden. The reason I'm in Bangkok, the Lord told me last year, go to Bangkok and pray. Um, I've done this many times when I hear the Lord say that. I don't even need a contact. I don't need anything. I just get the tickets. I get a team, and we get ready to go, and by the time I get there, it lines up. Um, and that's exactly what happened last time. We're actually returning um, because uh, I felt like, you know, our work was not done, and we're going to take more time. We're actually going to pray. We are going to minister. I, have a, I, ha I know for sure I'm going to be ministering to intercessors and probably um, extended from there. And then we'll head to Sweden, to the Supernatural School in Sweden. Again, go to my itinerary, jenniferivaz.com. You can see that. If you're in that area, if you're in Norway, you're over around Got Gothenburg, I want to see you at that, uh, at that uh, venue um, when I'm there in October. And then finally, and this is why I'm answering these questions, because I want to get everybody ready for the Seers and Prophets Institute that's coming up. A lot of times we can't get to this information uh, while we're at the Institute. There's so much going on so much download uh, so I like to get everybody ready so we're on the same page by the time we get there Sears and Prophets Institute October 25th to 27th here at Harvest Christian Center in Charlotte California we do have an online option you can select it when you register but I think it's better to get on campus and by the way we are really filling up we are filling up fast on this one um, you know and it's just kind of weird how fast we're filling up so I want to encourage you if you're gonna get on campus do it now you get the best prize because um, the early bird price goes away pretty soon but you get the best price but you'll get a seat okay um, so I just want to encourage you to do that <laughs> so I say can I be Become a prophet only if Jesus calls you that's Ephesians 4 so let's be biblical Jesus calls you as a prophet and if he doesn't call you you're not one all right now let's talk about seers prophets the prophetic gift um, get the sorry of spirit whoa somebody's got a problem and we're gonna take that off do me a favor if you see really crazy people on here I can't always catch it go ahead let's have a block party block it okay block the user thank you so much all right now Let's talk about these questions um, that came in. Uh, hang on just a minute. I'm going to dial this up. Okay. This is what Tammy says. Tammy says, yeah, block ministry, block party. Woo. That's right. Thank you. Um, Tammy says, does being a seer, having discernment, and being an empath, as psychology puts it, go together, or are they uh, different? Um, and uh, uh, I see Mr. Mrs. Josh Beer is on here. Lorena, help me out. Can you pay attention to some of these crazy wackos on here and block them? I know the others are on, on board too as well. Um, help me out here if you can. Um, Tammy says, does being a seer, having discernment, I, I'm reading this right off my computer, my Facebook page here, um, having discernment and being an empath, as psychology put it, go together or different. Okay, let me explain some of this. Seer, um, seer prophets, uh, we, we first read about them in the Old Testament. And, um, you know, actually the original prophets, the oldest prophets, someone says hello from Australia. Hello, hello. Uh, I love Australia. God bless you. Um, Seers in the Old Testament, you know, prophets actually were called seers in the Old Testament, you know, the, the ancient prophets, okay? And they were referred to as seers. And if I can just give you a quick definition, it really boils down to how they hear the word of God. Um, it's, you know, they usually visions, dreams, they, they see the Lord, uh, the voice of the Lord in nature. Uh, they see the voice of the Lord in, in, you know, things around them, okay? And basically what it feels like is there will be... Um, there will be like a like a, a sense of burden or um, a focus and and kind of like an illumination on something just in your ordinary world, and the Lord will speak off of it. And so it's many times what is happening with seers, okay, the seer prophets. And so and then it looked like it there's some dimension added to the office in the Old Testament. And then you had what was called Nabi prophets, and they would actually hear the word of the Lord. And that's where you see like a lot of these uh, books, you know, in the Bible, you know, the the major prophets, the minor prophets and it's like one long you know just straight up long prophetic word and some of them they've had visions some of them they just heard the, the word of God and you know they really worked out that word um, you know and and walk you know walked with the Lord to, to, to grab hold of that word and lay it out okay so it looked like it took on some dimension um, you know and then you, you actually in the New Testament you still have prophets that are primarily seers and prophets that primarily just hear the word of the Lord and then everything else in between okay because God you know he speaks to 
dimensionally. And that's something we're going to hammer, hammer out, you know, I'm sure we will at the Institute, is that God does not speak in a box, okay? He speaks however way he wants to. And we, we hear his voice dimensionally because we know him, because we walk with him. Um, and so anyway, um, you know, it's so, so now we have seer prophets in the New Testament. We have Nabi prophets in the New Testament. We have nature prophets. We have marketplace prophets. We have prophets to kings, prophets to government, prophets to, to, to nations. I mean, we have every, every kind of prophet, okay? Um, and my primary has been the seer prophet because they've seen to, for a long time, been kind of a lost tribe and really been bringing them into the body of Christ and normalizing them and helping them to language, um, you know, how they are hearing the word of the Lord because a lot of times they can't language what they are feeling, sensing, seeing and to the more logical linear uh, Christians. And, you know, um, and so we, I've been really work, doing a work of bridging for a lot of years to, to bring us all together so we can understand each other. Um, and so that's why I emphasize Sears and Prophets Institute is because I've been working with that community for quite a while. Um, and so what's interesting in the New Testament, however, is again, more dimension has been added to the, the, this gifting so that um, uh, the Holy Spirit, if you're a believer in Jesus, the Holy Spirit comes upon you and you too can actually see see into the spiritual realm you could have visions you could have dreams by the unction of the holy spirit you know you can see into those those uh, pieces and places as the lord gives you that that breath that impression and um and so that doesn't make you a prophet but it, it's interesting how the lord has expanded his voice uh in the new testament you know and so so now we have a whole community that that we have to work with to help them again you know die uh, uh help them with the way the Lord is speaking to them to dialogue it through and be able to say what they see with confidence, okay? But they're not prophets, okay? Prophets are different. Prophets are more governmental. Prophets have metrons of authority and things begin to happen in their metron of authority that nobody else can touch because the Lord didn't give them a metron. The Lord didn't give them the authority. All right, so so anyway, um, uh, you know, so that kind of explains a little bit about the seer. Now, uh, those who have the gift of discerning the spirits, um, again, you know, that's 1 Corinthians 12, and that's one of the nine gifts of the Spirit listed there. And then we see the actual um, defining of that gift. Probably the best scripture for that is right out, out, right out of um, Hebrews 5.14, where it says that the mature will actually discern uh, through their senses. Okay, they discern through their senses uh, what is good and evil. In other words, their eye gates, their, um, their, their ear gates, their, what they taste, what they sense, what they feel. Um, what they smell okay and they'll actually discern by the unction of the Holy Spirit you know um, uh, what spirit is motivating what and that could be positive it could be from the kingdom of God that could be demonic um, it could be you know from from the Satan's kingdom it could be just things uh, uh, connected to the human spirit okay and so you know the the gift of a uh, gift of discerning of spirits is very dimensional all right I think we're just finally getting our our feet um, you know, starting to walk out this gift. You know, I'm looking for the days when we actually begin to run in this gift because nations have to be delivered before nations can be saved in a day. And the Lord is going to raise up those kind of those kind of discerners, those kind of discerners and deliverers. Okay, I just prophesy that. And so anyway, um, so that's the gift of discerning of spirits. Many seers, many prophets, prophetic people also have the gift of discerning of spirits. Okay, it's a very common package. And I want to propose, I'm not saying this is, you know, right. Um, I just, I, it's just something I've been working through and just thinking through. And I'm just going to throw it out there as a possibility that prophets should discern well. They really should. When they don't, I believe the issue is they have a broken heart. And the reason I say that is because we see, we see, we discern through the eyes of the heart. And if your heart is broken, you can't perceive well, um, you can't see well, you can't discern well. And so I want to propose that the prophet that's lost their ability to discern, it's a heart issue, they have a broken heart, um, they need the Lord to heal their broken heart. That's what I want to propose. So I'm just going to throw that out there. Might not be, might not be totally right. Um, that's what I want to throw out and explore right now, okay? All right, now. Then she says, can you be an empath? Well, let's let's talk about that term, okay? Um, 
as a Christian, I don't use that term for myself. And I want to challenge those of you that are. And the reason is because it's not a biblical term. It's an actual secular term. It's a new age term. And a lot of the new age, new age uh, groups actually, you know, grab, you know, wrap themselves around that term. Here's the reason. Um, and that I believe is that the Lord said very clearly in the New Testament that he would um, pour out his spirit on all flesh, okay? Literally all flesh. So that means you don't even have to be saved and the Holy Spirit might come upon you. You might actually get a gift from the Holy Spirit and you're not even a Christian. Um, and so what does, I, I actually think that's the goodness of the Lord. And I think there are many people that have a gift of discerning of spirits um, because it has a protective element in it. They have the gift of discerning of spirits. They're not even saved yet. Isn't that the goodness of God? That as a non-Christian, you can discern if that person's for you or that person's against you. You can discern if there's trouble um, coming through a situation so you can protect yourself. I think that's the goodness of God. However, there is a term that's given to it because they don't have the term gift of discerning spirits, so they call it an empath. And then, you know, of course, it takes on, because it's spiritual, it takes on kind of some, some, some spirituality, but it doesn't bring God into it, okay? And that's the problem with some of this is a lot of people, you know, they have these spiritual experiences. They're not saved. Um, God's not in it. And so it's actually divination. It actually becomes divination. Anytime God's not in it, it becomes divination. Although I think some people just out of God's sheer goodness, he gives them the gift just to protect themselves. And I think that's amazing that he would do that and doesn't even need the credit, you know. But if you're a Christian, I want to challenge you in that term. Obviously, we are educated in that term. We know that people use that term. We know how to speak to people who use that term. You, uh, take advantage of that. If you know a more secular oriented person who believes that they're an empath, hey, what a dialogue you can have with them. Um, you know, and begin to show them uh, the reality of Jesus Christ. Uh, you know, so but but don't don't make make that your term. Okay, let's let's use biblical terminology, and so that's what I I would like to push. Um, nobody's going to hell over it. Okay, you know. You're not, but that's what I would like to push. Okay, next question, next question. Rachel says, um, what might be the significance when you have a landscape image or images of places played through your mind and have a longing for that place in your heart as a result? Um, I've had dreams where I know I'm in another country. Okay, interesting. So I think this is probably the first phase of actually being an intercessor, intercessor for nations or a prophetic intercessor uh, for nations. I don't know if you are a prophet or not. Um, so if you are a prophet, then that would be more of a praying prophet. Um, if you're not, you would be more of a prophetic uh, intercessor. And the Lord is beginning to shape um, shape, uh, shape a, a, a dialogue and a prayer in you for these other countries, for these other places. Now, what I want to encourage you at this stage is I want you to steward what you have because whatever you steward, God will increase, God will grow. So if you don't exactly know what this country is, um, that's okay. But eventually I believe that you will. Maybe you should ask the Lord. Um, again, you know, you said your mom gave you Psalm 2. I've been actually praying into that very Psalm. You know, ask of me, I'll give you the nations. Um, the Passion Translation says, ask uh, wealth of me and connects it to asking him for the nation. So I've been asking the Lord for the wealth of the nations, um, not in an economic way, although, you know, they're, they're usually something like that attached, but more the wealth of, of salvation, the wealth of the kingdom, you know, uh, the kingdom being advanced in these nations, okay? And so, so anyway, I think this is the beginning of a prophetic intercession. Uh, again, if the Lord's called you as a prophet, then you're probably a praying prophet, which means you're going to move into to land deliverance, which is something that the Lord has me do on occasion, and I can only do on occasion because it's grueling okay um all right let's see um uh, another question patricia says what are the different kinds of seers what are the different kinds of prophetic giftings um and uh you know i i don't look at it as there's different kinds of seers or different kinds of prophets i look at it as as having different kinds of metrons okay metron is a greek word um, for your sphere of authority. And the Apostle Paul says, I don't, I don't go past my sphere of authority, uh, indicating that he did have a sphere, and he was called to who? He was called to the Gentiles. The Apostle P uh, Peter was called to the Jews, to evangelize the Jews. P uh, Paul was called to evangelize the Gentiles. And so what you see here is that, you know, when you know your metron, whether it's, you know, um, uh, to the, the church, to the government, to a nation, you know, to a particular social issue, um, when you know your metron, 
then that would be, you know, the differences that we see in the seers, the difference that we see in the prophetic giftings, you know, it's just the, more the application in the metron of authority. Okay, and so I would answer it that way. All right, so I'm gonna leave it here tonight. These are the questions I'm gonna answer. I have tons of questions I'm gonna be answering, um, you know, over a period of time. I'll probably throw this question up a few times on my Facebook um, just to keep keep all the questions fresh. But anyway, I hope that helps you today. Um, again, just, just giving you some, some uh, education on Sears and Profits. Again, getting us ready for the Institute. Make sure that you register. How do you register? You register at eventbrite.com or you can go jenniferevaz.com and you can look at my itinerary and see it there. Okay, thank you. God bless.